We've always been close friends. We've we? had arguments over boys. <laughs> We've had a lot of arguments over things like that. Yeah. Our class Ash is my sister always have done. If she's ever upset, she always comes to me. I'll go to her. When I was eight weeks pregnant, she found out she was pregnant. It's nice to have Ashley pregnant as well. It's really nice to have her support. I'm 31 weeks pregnant. This is the keepsake box in it that we're going to give to him when he's older. Scans and like the pregnancy test that was from Poundland. 16 year old Ashley is having a baby with her boyfriend of two years, 19 year old Ryan. He was the first person that I proper fell for. I thought he was different to any other boy, like never lie, hurt, cheat, anything like that. But once we found out I was pregnant, things started getting a bit hilly in that, our relationship. His arms, elbow. Well, it's on and off really now. We don't really speak as much as what we used to, and we argue loads. Ashley was on the contraceptive pill, but after suffering too many side effects, decided to stop taking it. Everybody was saying to me, I was all right, because it builds up a wall round something that stops, obviously, you getting pregnant, and it'll take a while for that wall to breakdown sort of thing. So it was like a shock. I was one of them ones, so it ain't gonna happen to me. There's a picture to show you that he's a boy. You were really happy, you I were shaking, happy. weren't you? Really happy. They've already settled on the name Jaden for their son. Oh, when I found out she was pregnant, I was, well, I was over the moon. I didn't know what to think at first, telling family and what they would think, but um, I really was over the moon. Ashley's mum lives abroad and her dad with his new family in Portsmouth. So she lives with her six-year-old brother Levi and her grandma Anne in Norfolk. Wow, that was, that was I like flower. My grandma's been there from day one. I don't understand how she does it all. She had four children of her own and then taken on one of her children's children and then taken on another one. She's not really had no life of her own. Being close to her gran made it hard for Ashley to break the news about her pregnancy. I rang her and I said, I've done a pregnancy test and it is positive. Obviously, she wasn't impressed at all because of my age and she laughed at first and said, right, now you and Ryan have really got to buckle down. It's not just about you two anymore. You've both got to basically stop the arguing, stop being so selfish. I think she was then worried about me having my baby and clearing off and leaving my baby with her, so then she's got another like responsibility, which I wouldn't do anyway. I'm really looking forward to the responsibility of looking after him, and I'm actually excited even about changing his nappy and things like that, because I know it's me who's caring for him and making sure he's safe and OK. I'll let him know that I love him and I'll always support him. I'm there and I ain't going anywhere. I'm not just going to get up and leave him. Something that I never really had. When Ashley was just eight weeks pregnant, best friend, 15-year-old Sophie, decided she too would buy a pregnancy test and took it in the nearest place, King's Lynn bus station. She came out the toilet. Passed me the test and it had two thick dark lines. I was like, oh, pass it to her. And I you screamed. You came out and sat there, didn't you? I came running out. I'm going pregnant to Connor. And um, he didn't believe me. <laughs> Connor is Sophie's 17-year-old boyfriend and father of her child. They're having a boy and have already named him Charlie. She showed me the test because at first I was like, you're not pregnant. But uh, when I found out she was pregnant, I was shocked. I just... I couldn't believe it. Sophie's mum, Tammy, was at work as a care assistant when she received a text message. The phone went and that was a um, message from Sophie. Mum, please don't be mad. I've just taken four pregnancy tests and they've all come back positive. I didn't want to laugh, cry, I felt a bit hysterical inside. She screamed and cried. She felt disappointed because I'm not going to experience, like, the teenage stuff, like, going out, nightclubbing and stuff like that. 
Midwives told me that Charlie's hands like that. He's engaged, so he's gonna come up looking like Superman. That's gonna be pain. Don't worry about the pain you're going through. <laughs> as long as Charlie comes out fine, mm. you can scream as much as you want. <laughs> We were both disappointed she was pregnant because we would have liked her to have actually spent a little bit of time and enjoyed ourselves while they were younger. But at the end of the day, that's, that's our first grandchild and we're excited and I, I wouldn't have it any other way now. Oh, he's kicking my boob up. Sophie's pregnancy he's came at the end of a three-year spell of difficult behaviour. I was 13 when I first started having sex. I got kind of pressured into it. I should have said no, but I didn't. I didn't really understand what was going on, so I just went with the flow. <laughs> After that experience, I changed completely. I was just too much into boys. When I was 14, I started sleeping around a bit. I was a complete nasty person. I used to swear at my mum. I used to tell her I hate her. I was telling people who walked down the street for no reason. I caused a lot of chaos. What have we got? The wings. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At 15, Sophie left school before she'd taken her GCSEs. At least I never had the police on my door with you. Once at school, when I Where, hit that girl around the head with the crutch. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. It's just not even funny. You just put me through hell. You put that the, the, them people through hell. Her parents. She pulled my hair, so I got the crutch and whacked around the back of the head. But that doesn't make it right. Two wrongs don't make it right. And you know I've always said that. The way you spoke to the, these teachers, and you know, I never brought you up like that. I wouldn't. I just don't. I still don't understand it even today. <laughs> no, Sophie, it's really not funny. You need to learn to deal with your anger and your issues in a different manner. Can you take your girl to Scrabble now, please? Is it my girl sort of <laughs> it has been for the past, like, two hours. I've caused Mum to have a breakdown amount of time. She's walked out crying. She's screaming at me. Sophie has been a really, really difficult girl. I went out and got a job because she'd been so difficult and I thought I needed my space away from her and away from the home and just needed some time, like, for me. And I went out and got this job and I kept thinking to myself, the next step, she's going to be pregnant. I think it's 45. I just hope that's just going to be positive from here on. Well, I just want you to be a good mum and set a good example to Charlie. Sophie, you're not even listening to me. <laughs> Have you seen the cat in the box? I've seen the cat in the box. <laughs> but I want him to grow up knowing, you know, that education. It's boring. No, it's not. <laughs> it's only you who can make the right choices for your boy. And you need to make the right choices. Hi, Ashley. On her seat. Thank you. Ashley is now 34 weeks pregnant and is seeing her midwife every two weeks. Can you take your blood pressure? Do I need to pull my arm out? No, or... that's fine. It'll be fine like that. Thank you. Ryan is working hard as a bin man to support Ashley, but their relationship is still rocky. Thank you. That's fine. I haven't supported her as much as I should do. No, you haven't. As I said, you've been, all right, obviously, financially paying for the things baby needs, but you haven't physically been there for me. Going to try and be around here more if she wants... Well, no, it's not really that, is it? Well, it's not that. It's being honest with you and stuff, not being an Keep idiot. lying and... Lying, yeah, I used to lie. Do but... No, but the last time you lied was what? Not so long ago, and... I didn't cheat on you, did I? Yeah, you did. I couldn't physically go out there and sleep with no one else. I've not slept with no one else. No, you didn't physically, but you've done a lot of other things, so don't make it out to sound as if you're innocent. When, yes, no, you even know innocent. it was cheating what you've done. But I'm not having baby round that sort of environment, arguing, mm. shouting, because that's not nice for anybody to be in, let alone a baby. Only half of teenage mums are with the father of their child when the baby is born, and just a third are still together when the baby is five. I don't want to be in both their lives, babies and Ashley's. I love them both. Hopefully I do be a good dad. I try my best to be a good dad. That's fine, Ashley, just give it a tissue. I personally think he's just going to get bored of it and would rather be out doing better things, which I hope he proves me wrong. Around the corner, things are looking more promising for young couple Sophie and Connor. 
They now live together in Sophie's family home and they've recently got engaged. He's completely different from the guys I've been out with. The rest of them just, well, wanted one thing and when they got it, they went. But he stuck with me. I've always wanted a baby at a young age, but I didn't want a baby with any of anyone else apart from Connor. And it happened. <laughs> We can never get condoms to fit, so we couldn't really use them. So we was using a pull-out technique. Connor goes to college three times a week where he's resitting his GCSEs. Sophie has been out of school for nearly a year and is now 30 weeks pregnant, so she spends all her days at home. I'm home alone, I'm bored, so I'm just stuck on Facebook. My dad's asked me to, like, fold the wash and I just know in about an hour and a half, when Connor gets back, he'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I normally wait until he gets back from school to like get something to eat because well, I can't be bothered to make it. <laughs> I've always been lazy before I was pregnant. Thank you. When I come back to the house, if the hoover needs done, I'll do the hoovering. If there's washing up or something, if the animals need feeding, I'll just crack on and do it. Sometimes I feel guilty and watch them do it <laughs> all by myself, but um, it's not worth it, me getting up and doing it, because I'll just moan. <laughs> I'm glad it's him. She's been with many a... Many a lad has been through my door um, visiting. I'm just glad it was Connor. I think Connor's going to be a really good dad. He loves him already, and he's told me that he's doing night feeds so and I'm not allowed to touch him. <laughs> But Connor's not the only one that showers Sophie with love. I have been very overprotective of my children. I've not let them breathe sometimes. With Sophie, I kept her so tight on a tight leash. I think that's why she started rebelling. Even last year, we went to Panto. Because I still want you as children. I still want to wrap you up in cotton wool and protect you. And I just want you to still be my babies. Oh, that's hard. Your kiddies growing up and... And you can just, like, be gone and... <laughs> One minute, I'm like, clear off, you treat this place like a hotel. And the next, I'm like, come snuggle up to your mum and I never want to let you go. Ashley is now 38 weeks pregnant, while best friend and neighbour Sophie is just seven weeks behind. I've never seen one of these. No. <laughs> so they've decided to get prepared by watching a birthing video. That looks painful. Yeah, it does, <laughs> doesn't it? Oh, no, I've never seen nothing like this. Connor and my mum's going to be my birthing partners, and I think Connor probably will end up fainting <laughs> or running out the room. But my mum, she's seen babies being born, and she's going to be fine, I know she will. <laughs> what about if ours is, like, really fat? Since I've been oh. pregnant, I lost my dignity completely, and so I'm not worried about people seeing my bits. <laughs> I'm more worried about actually Connor seeing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys are in the pub, also thinking about what lies ahead. Not at all. I never thought I was going to be a dad as a teenager. No. Not at all. I thought I'd be, like, getting to my 20s or something. I was going to say 30 for me, but... 30. Yeah, no, I always said 20s. That's a big responsibility, yeah. but I'm pleased that we are having a baby. It is exciting. No, it is going to be exciting. I'm scary. What's going to happen in labour? I'll probably freak out and collapse. Yeah, I'm dreading labour, cos Sophie moves when she's got a headache, like, real bad, mm. let alone labour. She mates it at work the other day about cutting through the corners. Like, it's just like cutting through a sausage. So I was like, that's not yeah, too I bad. I told us, like, cutting like, through, like, rubber. No, I'm not really fast for what it is. <laughs> Let's get over and done with. Yeah. Wasn't even going to consider an epidural, but by the looks of that... <laughs> oh, now it's out. Oh. Now it's getting closer. We've only got a couple of weeks. It's now getting really scary. So I know it's happening and there's definitely no way about it now. So no, it's... That is scary, especially after seeing that. <laughs> it changes you, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You have to grow up. Tarash, a lot of times, has been an idiot and let her down. But that won't be happening again. No way. 
the best thing to do when you see her, ask how she's feeling, if she wants anything to talk I'll always about. ask how she's feeling. I mean, probably didn't as much as I used to. Yeah, just ask just... if she wants to talk, if she's got any problems, if she wants to talk about anything. That's going to be, like, my argument. You're going to get stressed because, like, as you said, sleepless nights. Mm. But, I mean, like, there's no point of having a full-grown argument, yeah. especially not in front of the baby, anyway. It's nearly Christmas and Ashley is now four days overdue. This Christmas present which Ryan got me from Jaden. It's really pretty. Mum on it. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Since Ryan's chat with Connor about relationships, things have moved on for him and Ashley. How are you and Ryan getting along? Haven't had one argument in three days. <laughs> Three Word. days without an argument, without a bit go, without anything. Not even a dig? Nope. I'm telling people, same as he is, that like we're in a relationship with each other. Physical relationship. <laughs> Ew. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you want another baby after Jaden? Not straight after, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be when me and him are like proper close again, financially stable, got our own home. Do you want another baby? Yeah. I want one straight after. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby girl. I've got a girl. Be like a good girl. Watch what you're up to. Joke At Sophie's house, neither she nor Connor has a job, so money is becoming an issue. Dad Malcolm works full time as a courier. Tammy and I work as hard as we can. Tam will do extra shifts at work. Me, I'll do as much as I possibly can just to try and get a little bit extra money. I do go out on Saturdays, I go out on Sundays, I go out on bank holidays. It is hard, but I'm prepared to do as many hours as I can to help my family. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. It's not just Sophie, Connor and the baby that need feeding. Sophie's 17-year-old brother, Jake, is also still living at home. I've got to pay £20 a week for keep, which I thought was fair enough. But Connor and Sophie sit at home all day and doesn't have to pay nothing. While I'm at work, busts my ass for 45 hours a week on £3.60 an hour. That's the only thing I'll probably do today, feed a fish. <laughs> my mum and dad have spent a lot on me, Connor and baby. I still can't believe they remortgaged the house though to help us. They bought us the pram, they bought us most of his um, clothes and um, his cot blankets and cot sets, and they really helped us a lot. Mum Tammy is also working as many shifts as she can. I'm shattered. What with full time working, trying to keep on top of things at home, trying to run the house, trying to do the food shopping and the washing. That's just very, very tiring. That's all right for you, you can lay down all day. I can't. You ain't got a job to go to, or... No, we you have to clean do... up the house. Yeah, and how much of that do you do with that fight? Not a lot. I've done it this morning. Only because you had to. With everyone around her working so hard, it's made Sophie question her decision to leave school last year. If I could go back and tell myself to try hard at school, I would have done. I've not got a good record, so that's going to stop me getting jobs. It's a shame, really, how I used to behave, because thinking about it, me and my mum would have been more friends, and I, used to, I would have a lot more friends. But I guess you learn from your mistakes. After my baby's here, I'm going to try and get into college and do cooking, because that's what I've always wanted to do. Oh, oh he's peeing, he's peeing, he's peeing. <laughs> oh dear. That was close. So quickly, quickly get, get his wipes up. Oh, that's more wrong. Oh. Oh. I really knew it was going to be painful, like, pushing a baby out. I didn't know what I was letting myself in for. And that was the worst pain I've ever felt. But especially when 
I'll feel like I get you to touch the baby's head as it's crowning. That burnt so bad, that burnt, that really burnt. And I had to have stitches as well, didn't I? Yeah. I had a second degree tear, so it was a really, really bad tear. And I bled absolutely loads. I thought I was going to faint, but I didn't. After cutting the cord and then having a hug with him, just felt closer to Ash, I feel closer with him. I felt great. And then giving Ash a big old hug, saying, well done. And she didn't run really well. I feel all the screaming and shouting, bless her. <laughs> Since coming home, Ryan has been staying for a week to help out while Ashley's gran is on holiday. It's been great, getting used to getting up early and looking after him, looking after Ash, because obviously she's going to be sore from having stitches in the ribbon. Yeah, last night was the worst night we've had. He wouldn't settle, so we were both getting tired, so we were both getting a bit arty with each other. Mm -hmm. I think when I haven't got him to help, I am going to find it definitely really, really, really hard, especially if it was like last night. If it's like last night, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> While Ashley and Ryan get used to the sleepless nights, Sophie is having a night to remember. A week after her due date, she finally went into labour. Hold your breath and push down. She found the first 12 hours so difficult, she decided to have an epidural. Nearly 24 hours after her first contraction, Sophie gave birth to her little boy, Charlie. <laughs> He's trying to cry, but he didn't know how to. He's getting there. Back at home, memories of the birth are still raw in everyone's minds. She got a little bit anxious when the pain sort of kicked in. And it just got to the point where she kept asking to, to like, give her a cesarean, give, get forceps, get whatever, just get him out. To see your daughter in that sort of pain, or, or your son, no matter what, to see your child in pain like that, it, it kills you inside. You got a wind puppy. I must admit, at one point there, I was very, very scared. I was trying my hardest not to cry. I just didn't know what to do. There was nothing I could do to help her. Luckily, we had um, her mum there, and she was, like, keeping her calm. <laughs> Sick of Ashley and Ryan have been parents for two weeks now, and Ryan is now living back at his mum's. I think it's been really hard for us. It's not like getting sleepless nights. And we scream and how he is now. What time did he wake up last night? He don't just ever wake up once. Was you a pain in the bum last night? No. Oh, good one. Well, actually, look what he's doing. So I'm saying he's, not, he's just messing around with it again. Oh, it passes him here, look. No, I'm feeding him. Well, take it out of his mouth and stick it back in, then. Well, don't keep going mad. If he don't want it, he don't want it, don't Yes, he does. That's what I'm saying. You know whether when he does that, to take it out of his mouth and stick it back in. I'm sorry, love. Yeah. And tell me not to go mad, cos it's not you always has to wash his clothes and everything, is it? Maybe because I'm not here to wash his clothes when you wash his clothes. He just seems to think that he's got the hard part of it all, and no, he ain't. Have I said I got the hard part? I understand when you go to sleep, you get sleepless nights, but I can't do nothing when I'm a bed. No, I'm not saying that you can do anything, can I? Has he got a cloth or anything? No, just use my dressing gown. Fair enough. Well, sorry if you didn't get a, well, if you got a sleepless night and taken out on me, but no, that's fair I'm enough. No, I'm not taken out on you. You just think everything's so Ash, quick and easy for you, don't you? How's everything yeah. easy? I'll get back from work and then you tell me to hurry up, so I'll like, try and be quick as I can. I didn't get back till four o'clock. You just take out on me all the time. As soon as I get back from work, hurry up. I'll do as quick as I can. You are such a selfish <laughs> Do you know that? How, right? am I, how am I selfish? You know I can't wait to get up here and like, look after him. I'd love to. I hate stacking sterilizer. Sophie is also adjusting to her new life as a teenage mum. I need to wipe my hands. I can't even do it. I said, Connor can do it when you go to work. Sophie, do you mind if I make Charlie's bottles? No, that's fine. I should really make her do it. We're actually making Sophie very lazy, all of us. Yeah, you are. Not that she seemed to care very much, that one. 
As well as a doting grandma, little Charlie has a doting father too. You look so tired. Colin's a fantastic dad. Oh, he's just so loving. He's just perfect. It's harder than I first thought it would be. I don't like changing nappies. I don't mind putting them on. I just don't want... I don't like changing poo nappies. It's just, I can't hack it, I'll be sick. Our relationship stay the same. It's just so strong and nothing's going to break it. We haven't started trying for a baby yet. Well, I'm hoping we're going to start trying when he's, like, about eight, nine months. So, like, he'll have someone to grow up with as well. Having a newborn in this busy house has had an effect on the entire family. When I first saw Charlie, I cried. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I feel the same now, actually. It sounds, it sounds ridiculous, I know, but that boy has got so much love around him, he has brought all the family together. I don't know if I was on the verge of murdering her, committing suicide, leaving, or throwing her out. But now, she's turned a corner, and I love her. And I actually really, really like her now, really like her. We've become friends, really, really close friends. While things have moved along for Sophie's family, Ashley is dealing with some big changes too. Me and Ryan split up completely this time. But at the end of the day, it's not fair on Jade and seeing his parents argue. And when I say argue, I mean screaming at each other all the time. So I don't want to be with them. I am disappointed that things turned out like how they are. I wish they turned around and we was together, made a family, got our own place. Despite the split, both are still determined to share the parenting. Ryan's his dad and it'll always stay like that. He is absolutely brilliant with Jade. Do he love him a bit? We need to sort something out so I can see him more and we get that sort of bond. Because I don't want that bond to like, go away or anything. I want us to like, be there for each other so he can come and like, look up to me sort of thing. I've asked him if he'll have him one night a weekend and then hopefully if Jaden grows up like that, he'll then realise he's got his mum in his life and he's got his dad in his life. He's my world. I wouldn't ever take him away. I wouldn't ever want no one to take him away. I absolutely love him. I really do. He means absolutely everything to me. I've never loved anybody or anything as much as I've loved that little boy. And nothing will ever, ever change that and I will, I'll always be there for him. 